In this video, we'll be going through how to set up Google Analytics with Next.js. With the release of version 11 of Next.js, they've come out with a new script component, which allows you to automatically prioritize the loading of third-party scripts to your website, such as the Google Analytics tag. Whether you've already implemented Google Analytics and you're wondering how to upgrade to the upgraded script tag in Next.js 11, or you're starting fresh, I'll be going through the best way to implement it within your Next.js projects. Let's jump right into it. The absolute first thing that you'll need to do if you're using Google Analytics for the first time is go to analytics.google.com and create a Google Analytics account. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and create a new Google Analytics property within that new account. To do that, we'll click on the admin icon down here. We'll go create property. We'll give the property a name and set it up with your personal preferences of choice. Then we'll just hit create. This is where we we'll need to set up a data stream for our property. Since we're using Next.js, I'll choose web. Here's where you wanna enter your website URL as well as the name for the data stream that you're creating. Once you've done that, we'll click create stream. So now that we're here, we've set up our property as well as our data stream. We'll just leave this web stream details window open in the background. Now we'll set up our new Next.js project using the command line. To create a new Next.js project, we'll say npx create next app and the name of your application. We'll change directories into our newly created application. And we'll open it up in Visual Studio Code by saying code dot. Now that we've opened up our project, we'll navigate to the underscore app.js file. This is Next.js's custom app component. Code that you write on this page is going to impact all of your pages since every page is wrapped within this component. That's perfect for our Google Analytics tag since we want it to be included on all of our pages. The first thing that we need to do is import the script component from Next.js. Now I'll go back to the Chrome tab that we left open inside Google Analytics, and I'll expand this global site tag gtag.js. As you can see, there's two scripts here that we want to paste in, but we're not gonna use that exact code. What we'll do instead is use the new Next.js 11 script component. I'll go ahead and copy this code so that we can reference it inside our Visual Studio code. I'll just paste it here and comment it out so that we can reference it while we're typing. What we'll do now is create these script components. To do that, what we'll say is script, and what we wanna pass here is a strategy as well as the source of the script. The strategy that we wanna use for analytics tags is called lazy onload. And the source of this first tag is just going to be this code here. And we'll close that script off. That's our first script done. And the second script that we want is similar to the first one. We'll use a strategy is lazy onload. And instead of using a source for that, we'll close off the script and we'll put some code in brackets in here instead. What we wanna do now is copy and paste this code that we copied, copy the whole thing, and paste it within those curly brackets and obviously uncomment it up. You wanna put that in a string as well. And once you're done with that, this is complaining because it's unreachable with this return statement. So we'll wrap all of this inside a return statement. And of course you need a parent tag above all of these. So we'll just do an empty tag. And we'll just fix up the formatting a little bit with an extension called Prettier. And we'll go ahead and delete this commented out section as well. To test this out, we'll go back to the command line and run npm run dev. This is gonna kickstart the server at localhost 3000. We'll go and visit that now. As you can see, this is our web page, and a good way of telling if this actually worked is first of all, you can click F12, that'll bring up the Chrome console. And you can just type in data layer. And as you can see, we've initialized it with our config. And these are the three events that have been triggered to our Google Analytics property. And we can actually check that in real time as well. If you want to double verify that you've set it up properly, go back to your Google Analytics property and click on this real time icon in the menu here. And as you can see, the pages are coming through. So this is the title of the app that we created here. And if you want to test it out, just say uh, a page that won't work. This is going to send the 404 page to the Google Analytics property in real time as well. So hopefully that'll show up in a second here. And as you can see, that page is being sent to our property as well. Now, if you wanna take your code to the next level, what you wanna do is rather than exposing your measurement ID in plain text here, you'll want to create a new file at the root of your project called .env.local, which is an environment variables file. 
what you want to do here is create a key value called next right next underscore public underscore Google underscore analytics doesn't have to be that but that's just an example name and what you do is say equals and we'll extract this measurement ID out of the code here and place it in here instead now in your code we'll say instead of just the measurement ID we'll say dollar sign curly brackets and we'll say process.env and we'll paste the name or process.env dot and then paste the name of the key that you created in the environment variables file and we'll do that in this part of the code as well here so we'll say dollar curly brackets process dot env dot next public google analytics and that way you can commit your code to a public repository without exposing your measurement id that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe it helped you out a little bit if it did please consider hitting the like button as it really does help out my channel and if you want to see more content like this in the very near future consider subscribing to the channel as well thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one